Okay, well, thank you all and greetings from Canada. So I'm going to talk about our front of pack labeling uh, system in Canada. It's part of the healthy eating strategy introduced by the governments of Canada. And just to explain, we're at the face right now of being at Canada Gazette part one. In other words, the regulations were published last February, but they are not finalized until the final regulations are published within 18 months of that date. So we expect the final versions of the regulations to be um, out in either late 2018 or into 2019. So my next couple of slides are gonna talk about why front of pack labeling ma matters. And what we're really doing in attempting with uh, front of pack labeling is to not just provide consumers with the facts, but also provide them with the information and enable to interpret that information. And I've shown some of the various front of pack labeling schemes that I think are all add much more interpretation for the consumer to understand and use the information provided on the various facts base or nutrition facts tables. And why you go to more symbol based or interpretive based labeling, it really reduces the cognitive skills required by the consumer to actually use that information. And the other thing that front of pack labeling does is it really does balance what I call all the other information that is on food packages that are really just promoting the positive attributes of the food. And for consumers that really can give what we call a halo effect. And this is data from our research group that really shows that right now about 50% of foods in the Canadian uh, food supply carry some form of claims on the front and, and about 20% have already have front of pack symbols, but all of these refer to positive attributes of the food. And what do I mean by this halo effect? Um, this was another study done looking at um, a food, I think it was a, a chicken dinner. And you can see in the light blue over on this side, this is just the nutrition facts table. But when a food has a health check showing it's he healthier, the consumer thinks it's healthier, even though that's exact same food with the same nutrition facts table. Similarly, when there are um, um, specific systems or traffic light labels, while just the, the guideline daily amount, which just gives nutrient levels, performs similarly to the, um, in terms of the eye of consumer being healthy as the nutrition facts table. Equally, we get that same effect with the foods that have health claims, and I said about 50% of the foods have health or nutrition claims. And if you look at the first bar as in terms of how the consumer consider this happens to be a soup can, a tomato soup, when the food has a nutrient content claim or a health claim, consumers perceive the food as being healthier, even though it has exactly the same nutrition information, and in turn would be more likely to purchase that food. And the final reason of why um, nutrition, uh, front simplified nutrition front of pack labeling is important is that halo effect is actually higher and more magnified in consumers with lower health literacy. And this was a study of a whole variety of juices and beverages that had a variety of labels on and a variety from unhealthy to healthier beverages. And you can see that consumers with that had lower health literacy perceived those foods no matter what the nutrition levels were to being healthier than those consumers who had adequate health literacy. So the next, um, that was a good setup of why. The next couple of slides, I'm gonna to talk to you about uh, what the actual proposed system looks like in Canada. So the regulations that have been proposed were that it will be a mandatory system. Unlike the traffic light labeling, it will be mandatory all foods that exceed the thresholds will have to put the front of pack warning type label on foods. Although at this point with the last uh, publication in Canada Gazette part one, we do not know what the actual label symbol will look like, but it will have elements similar to what we see here, but the final version we don't know. The symbol will be based on thresholds for three nutrients of public health concern, and they include saturated fats, sugars and sodium. And there will be some exemptions for foods consistent with the food guide. And in the regulations, there are specific regulations that will govern the, um, the format of the front of pack system and how it fits on the food package. I'll describe that next. 
And to also let you know, although these regulations were published in 2018, government has announced that they will not come into full force until the end of 2022. In other words, five years after the intention was first published. Oops, sorry. And so now I'm just going to briefly overview. Um, Mike had said the UK system was based on a 25% threshold. In Canada, the Health Canada is proposing that the thresholds would be based on foods that exceed 15% of the daily value, and it would be 30% for packaged meals or main dishes. And this is consistent with the labeling education program that has been set up in Canada and has been operating for a number of years where Canadian consumers have been taught to use this daily value symbol where 5% represents a little and foods that exceed 15% um, are considered a lot of a nutrient. So the front of pack labeling will also be consistent with our nutrition labeling education campaign as well. I mentioned there will be some uh, exemptions. So in other words, foods that um, are already exempted from carrying a nutrition facts table, for example, unprocessed vegetables and fruits or meats will be exempted from the front of pack labels, as will restaurant foods. Unfortunately, they don't have nutrition facts tables. So as the legislation currently sits, they will not be required to have front of pack logos on the restaurant menu boards or uh, in menus. Foods that have no added, added saturated fats, sugars, or sodium would also be exempted from pr um, producing or carrying a front of pack label, as would foods where the symbol was considered redundant, redundant i.e. packs of sugars or packs of salt. There is a number of clarifications or very clear specifications in the regulations about formatting. So the, the size of the format is based on the principle, the size of the label must be front of pack is based on the principal display surface. In other words, it must appear on the top 25% of the principal display surface or the front of the package. There can be no other nutrition information in a buffer zone. In other words, the top 35% cannot have any competing um, health-related names, logos, symbols, or seal of approvals, or other marks in that top 35% of the package. And additionally, the size of any other health-related um, symbols or claims on the package cannot be larger than two times the size of the capital letters in the front of pack symbol. In other words, so they cannot overwhelm and really have the front of pack symbol lost amongst the other information on the food package. And we have a food label program that has looked at the foods that are sold in the Canadian grocery stores. And one of my postdocs, um, Anthea Christophero, has looked at the proportion of foods from our food label database that would be required to carry a front of pack labels if they were not reformulated and by what they looked at in 2013. And you can see that about 28% would be be over the threshold for saturated fats, about the same amount for sugar, and about 35% would exceed the thresholds for sodium. And that would result with about 67% of foods, if they were not reformulated, would carry at least one front of pack symbol in Canada. And this, of course, would vary by food group, as all, not all food categories would, are, some are much more healthy than others. So obviously, you wouldn't see as many front of pack symbols in all the food categories. And I just would like to, fi to finalize by just saying what we see this um, system doing is really moving the responsibility for making healthier food choices from what were just simple education programs that put all the onus on the consumer to find and make healthier food choices to things like regulating regulations where you mandate nutrition facts tables on um, food packages, we have mandated calorie labeling in some uh, restaurants in Ontario, one province. And now, of course, this mandated front of pack labeling system. But I think we also see that we can even go further with other regulations that are currently being introduced in Canada. We really do put regulations to improve the food environment. And I would give examples like this for setting the uh, limits for sodium in foods, which we have benchmarks in Canada now and the most recent um, ban on the use of industrial 
produce trans fats and foods in Canada. And with that, I'd like to thank you all very much and um, um, also acknowledge the funders and many students and collaborators who we've worked with over the years in this area. Thank you. Thanks very much, Mary. There was just one question that uh, came in that I think is worth answering now before I go to Chantal Julia, and that is, are cheeses included in the system? Um, yes, cheeses are. Um, now, how they'll work out in the final um, uh, thresholds and cutoffs, um, there is still some work being done, and as because we're in put phase one of the Canada Gazette, there may be some adaptations to ensure consistency with Canada's food guide. But as, as it is now, there are a number of cheeses that would have um, either, so, for example, sodium front-to-pack labels in some of the cheeses. 